What we're going to do today is look at finding the area in between curves now. We've looked at finding area under curves for different curves, um, but now we're going to take two different functions, put them on the same graph, and find the area between them. And the process is going to be very similar to what we've already been doing. Uh, for example, we've got y equals secant squared and y equals sine x, and we're looking at a small interval here from 0 to pi over 4. And what we want to do is find the area between the curves. That's going to be this area right in here. We want to find this area right in here. Okay? And we follow the exact same steps that we took to find the area under the curve. But now we're going to find the big area under the big curve. And we're going to subtract the area under the little curve. So what we're going to have left is that area in between them. It's just the, it's the same thing of thinking if you've got a big rectangle and a little rectangle, how much is the space inside that little rectangle? Okay, big area minus little area. So how do you do that? You do that by integrating, all right? Your upper integral, f of x, minus your lower integral, g of x. So for this particular problem, we would integrate from 0 to pi over 4. secant squared x minus sine x dx. This is what we would integrate. And, and so we integrate this, we plug our numbers in, and we're off and running. Now the cool thing is, for my students, you can start using your calculators to help you out a little bit. We've done the integration, and you're expected to be able to do that, so I trust that you can. If you're somebody else's students, they may still want to see some work done by hand, and that's okay. Uh, we can do this. The, the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. Um, and the, and the antiderivative of minus sine x is plus cosine x. So we're just going to evaluate those guys from 0 to pi over 4. And remember, it's stop minus start. So we're going to have, on one hand, tangent of pi over 4 plus cosine pi over 4 minus tangent 0 plus cosine 0. You also need to read the question. Uh, if the question wants an exact answer, a calculator on this one is probably not going to work because it's going to give you a decimal. Okay, So on the, on the left here, we've got uh, 1 plus square root of 2 over 2. That's in the first. Minus the tangent of 0 uh, is going to be 0. And the cosine of 0 is 1. Okay, so this is what this guy looks like. Uh, we're going to end up with 1 plus square root of 2 over 2 minus 1. And so the area between the curves of secant squared x and sine x from 0 to pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. And that really is all there is to it. And there's a vast, huge discovery that's just waiting to happen with all of this. Uh, we can find... Um, volumes, we can find areas, it doesn't matter what the curve shape is, we can rotate things. Um, the door that we're stepping through with this simple process is really, really neat. So hang on for the ride, we've got a lot of cool things to talk about coming up. Sometimes when you're looking for the area enclosed by two functions, the problem is really mean to you and doesn't give you uh, where you're integrating from. And so if we want to find the area between these two curves, we need to find these two points right here. In fact, we need to find the x values for these two points. Uh, because when you integrate, you're integrating along the x-axis. At least that's what we've learned so far. And so in order to find the x value at these two points, I can look at my graph. And, and right here, it's pretty obvious that it's negative 1 to 2. But what if I have a situation where I'm trying to find this area in here. I'm looking for this area in between these two curves. And I can't tell. Or it falls into some goofy spot or whatever. Then what we have to do is we're just going to set these two guys equal to each other. Like, I want to know where does 2 minus x squared equal negative x? Like, I want to know where that is. And so if I can figure out where that is, then I know my x values, okay? So go ahead and treat this as a quadratic. You've got negative x squared on the left. You've, and, and we're going to, if we're going to treat this as a quadratic, we want all the x's on, in, on one side. And I prefer my x squared term to be positive, so I'm going to move the x squared term over, and I'm going to move the 2 over. And if you'll notice, this factors to x and x minus 2 and plus 1. 
And, and when, it, when this happens, what I'm going to end up with is that x is going to be equal to 2 and x is going to be equal to negative 1. You see that? Why do I know that? Because I'm going to let x equal 0 here. I'm going to let x plus 1 equal 0 here. And so when I solve those guys out, this is what I get. And now integrate top minus bottom from negative 1 to 2. So we're going to integrate from negative 1 to 2 the top equation, 2 minus x squared, minus the bottom equation. So let me add another minus the bottom equation. And it's really important that you subtract the entire bottom equation. It's not, not just minus x, it's minus negative x. And again, with my kids, just like on the previous slide, my kids, you can punch this in. You've earned the right to do that. But if you are another student, you may not have that option. So to work it out, it really is not too painful here. We're going to have um, 2 minus x squared plus x. And this is what we're going to integrate. And that becomes 2x minus x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2. And we're going to evaluate that from negative 1 to 2. And, and then the evaluation part is now is, is really simple. And remember, we're going to have uh, stop minus start. Okay, So I'm going to have 2 times 2. Now I'm going to write this a little different because of space, but it should make sense to you. I'm going to have 2 cubed over 3 plus 2 squared over 2 minus, and then I'm going to just second row here, 2 times negative 1. Um, minus negative 1 cubed over 3 plus negative 1 squared over 2. So I'm just going to go top minus bottom. Now this is going to look really weird. I'm, the math is solid, I promise. So I've got 4 minus negative 2, 6. Okay? I've got 8 thirds, negative 8 thirds plus 1 third minus 7 thirds. I've got 4 over 2 plus, which is minus uh, 1 over 2. So that should be um, 3 over 2. Did I do this middle guy right? This is 8 thirds minus positive 1 third. 8 thirds minus 1 third. That should be 9 thirds. Okay. So now I've got 6 minus 3, that's 3, minus 3 halves, okay? And 3 uh, minus 3 halves is going to be 1.5, or 3 halves. So how much total space is in between uh, these two guys right here? Did I do that right? Let's see, that would be 6. I feel like I got off somewhere. Found it. This should be a plus three halves right here. So that's plus three halves right here. So sorry about that. Three plus three halves should be nine halves. Okay, nine halves units squared. That's how much space is enclosed between this upper curve and the lower curve. So um, that's how you can sort this out if you have a situation where you're not sure exactly where your points intersect. This graph, it shows us it's very clear. Uh, you can also graph these two functions, 2 minus x squared and y equals negative x. You could graph them on your calculator and tell your calculator to find where they intersect as well. So there's lots of different options for this guy. All right, on this problem, you get to use your calculator the whole entire time. Isn't that great? So what we're going to do, and you can see it right now, is we want to find the points of intersection right here. Okay. And once we've found what those points of intersection are, we know where we're going to integrate from. So using your calculator, we're going to find out that these are the points. Negative 1.265. And this one's going to be positive 1.265. Okay. And then we just need to figure out which is on top and which is on bottom. So using what I know about cosine, I know cosine goes through the y-axis of positive 2. So that's got to be my top equation minus, and then put this whole thing in parentheses, x squared minus 1, because we want to subtract that whole guy, okay? And so when we do that, this is the equation that we have set up. And because we've got such um, 
unique upper and lower bounds, go ahead and just use your calculator the whole time, punch it in no matter who you are, because it's just easier. And once you get it all punched in, you should find out that the area in between the curves, which is all this stuff right in here, all that total area, is going to be 4.994 units squared. So we love these kind of problems because we can use a calculator the whole entire time, and that does make life nice sometimes. Okay, what we're going to do on this problem then is we're going to find the area under the curves, between the curves, and, um, and we want to know what the area is in the first quadrant. So we're actually just looking right in here. We want to know this area right here. The thing is, we've got a couple different functions that we have to investigate. And if you'll notice, from 0 to 2, we're with one function, okay? We'd be the red function minus the green function. But from 2 to 4, and if you'll see right here, 4 is where the magic happens, 2 to 4, I'm a different function because now that blue line comes in and takes over. So for this problem, we're going to look at the area, but we're going to look at two separate functions, okay? Two separate integrals, and we're going to add those two integrals together. So we're going to start off with our top function, which will always be this guy. He's always going to be on the top, okay? So the first integral will look like from 0 to 2, square root of x, or x to the 1 half power, minus the bottom function, which in this case is the equation y equals 0. Plus, and then we go from 2 to 4. And if you don't believe me on 2 to 4, then what you would do is you would set the square root of x equals x minus 2, and you would, you would solve that out. And it'll tell you what value of x uh, occurs where they are equal. And you'll see that square root of 4 is 2, and 4 minus 2 is 2. So that's going to work. So then we could do the top one again, which is going to be x to the 1 half minus the bottom one, the whole bottom one, which is x minus 2. So there's that guy. Uh, if you're one of my students, you can use your calculator and punch this in. If you're in a class where you can't use a calculator and punch it in, then just use your integration rules. So we're going to look at this guy right here, integration of 0. He goes away. Remember, he's, he's gone. Can't integrate 0. It's just 0. So what we end up with is x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, which is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. And we're going to evaluate that one from 0 to 2. Plus, and then over here, we've got um, x to the 1 half ooh, minus x plus 2. That's what we would be integrating. So this is going to be the same thing, x to the 1 half. So that's going to be 2 thirds x to the 1 half minus x squared over 2 plus 2x. And it is going to be evaluated from 2 to 4. And remember, on both of these, it's stop minus start. Stop minus start. So 2 cubed square rooted. All right? That's what we'd have here. And then on the other side, we still have that 2 cubed square rooted. So we would still have that same answer because there's the 2. And then we would use minus the 4. So I'm going to punch this into my calculator and get a, a final answer on this. Um, you can work it out you know, on your paper if you need to. And let's see if we match answers. So I did notice I left this X off when I integrated. So make sure you have that added in there. And I worked all this out on a sheet of paper because I've kind of run out of room here. And I wound up with 10 over 3 units squared. That's this area right in between these two curves. And what we're doing is we're taking the area of the first space, which we could call it right here, A1, plus the area of the second space right here, which we could call A2. Okay? We add those two guys together, you should get 10 thirds. So double check me. You can use your calculator. If your calculator gives you a decimal answer, you can plug in 10 divided by 3 and see if it gives you the exact same decimal answer. All right? Okay, let's look at the same exact problem that we just did, but this time when we work it out, 
What if we look for the area under this curve here, same area, okay, above the x-axis and in between these two guys. But what if instead of integrating two separate functions and two separate deals and adding it all up, and what if you make a mistake? What if we integrated with respect to y? In other words, instead of having equations that say y equals, what if we had equations that say x equals, okay? So if I've got y equals the square root of x and I wanna know what x equals, then square both sides and I have y squared equals x. That's the orangey colored equation here, the reddish orangey, probably reddish. Bad colorblind mistake there. Uh, on the other on the other side, if I've got y equals x minus two, then all I have to do is add two to both sides, and and now I don't integrate on x numbers, I integrate on y numbers. Okay, and again we notice that this point up here was the point four two. Okay, so I'm actually going to set up an integral now from zero to two, from zero to two, and when I do that, I do my furthest to the right, my stop function minus my start function. So my stop function is actually here. This is where my area stops if I look at it and compare it with the y-axis. This would be my start function here because this is where my area starts if I look at it compared to the y-axis. So what do you do? You do start, or you do stop, minus start and then and now you integrate it with respect to dy and all of a sudden instead of having to look at two separate things you only have to look at one and you can enter you can if you're in my class you can punch this into your calculator if you're not in my class and you've got to integrate this then it just integrates to y squared over 2 plus 2y minus y cubed over 3 and evaluated from 0 to 2 remember that you're uh, doing stop minus start, okay? So it would be two squared over two plus two times two minus two cubed over two. And remember, if you put zeros in in all those places, you just get zero. So two plus four minus, what's that, eight divided by three? No, two cubed is eight. Eight divided by two is four. Uh, what have I got wrong here? Y, 2y, y squared over 2. All right, I got my mistake right here. This should be cubed. So this is a cubed here, which is going to make this 8 thirds. So that's going to be 6 minus 8 thirds, which again will be 10 thirds units squared. So there you go, there's finding the area between two curves. It's, it's not very different from what you've been doing, uh, but now you're gonna have to pay attention to which function is on top, and if that changes, then you need to also account for that as well, okay?